We respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the land in which this video was filmed. Hello, I'm Crystal Kinsella and today I'm joined with David Williams. How are you going? Really well, really well. Cool. So thanks for taking the time to have a chat. Pleased to be here. Tell me about yourself. Who are you? Who's your mob? My name is David Williams. I'm a proud Waka Waka man. I was born in um, Drummond Country, Central Queensland, Rockhampton, and uh, high school in Kabi Kabi Country, and uh, have called Turbul and Yarra Country in uh, Mianjin home for the last 20 or so years. That's fantastic. Now you've been in business for quite some time, and I imagine that your why is something that's perhaps evolved over time. Can you talk to me about, you know, what is your why? What's driving you? What's that fire in the belly each day? It's interesting, Crystal, because my why hasn't changed. Wow. And it hasn't changed from, I guess, in the last 20 or so years, or even before that, I'd, potentially as, as a kid, because growing up in Rocky, it's a very, um, it's a very racist town. Um, a lot of people from Rocky know that. People have been through Rocky or anything, know anything about Rockhampton. Um, wouldn't disagree with that. So um, it was really interesting growing up in that environment with some, I guess, I was fortunate to have some really strong uncles and aunties who, um, who I guess helped shape a lot of my thinking when I was younger, but I didn't realise what that would mean until later on. Um, I grew up in a creative family, a musical family, and um, I was uh, fortunate enough while I was studying at uni to start getting a number of gigs as a didgeridoo performer. Um, and, um, and in my early 20s, I scored a contract with Qantas to do a lot of the stuff, promotional stuff overseas. So here I am in my early 20s performing, you know, overseas in Beijing and San Francisco and all these places. And what I found was people would roll out the red carpet because they hadn't had much to do with Aboriginal people or culture before. And it was interesting because they treat you like a rock star. You come back home to Australia and you just treat it as a second class citizen. And at that point, I realised there was something wrong with this. So um, I'd, um, uh, while I was at uni, I was studying some multimedia subjects as well as doing a lot of freelance art and design. Um, and I was fortunate enough to work in a um, radio station, AAA, back in the day, 98.9 FM. And, um, and learning a lot about, I guess, you know, in that environment around Aboriginal rights, you know, media and that voice that yeah. I guess our people needed. So as, a, as an artist and as a musician, I really honed in on the value of creativity and using that as a tool to help educate that ignorant non-Indigenous audience to what our culture is and the value that we um, I guess, have within ourselves and what that value is to the rest of this country. Yeah. So that really put me on a, um, on, on a course to, to end up in business, yeah. right? So um, it's interesting because you talk about the Indigenous business sector and, yeah. and where things have gone. Um, I'd always had that passion, drive and purpose to, um, to be a creative in a professional environment. The byproduct of that is you're effectively an Indigenous business while doing that, right? So um, so that why for me just simply has been, you know, that course that I've stayed, you know, yeah. ever since I was in my early 20s and earlier on. Yeah, some pretty powerful stuff there. So how do you translate that why into business? Mm. I mean, you talked a little bit about being creative mm. and then, you know, you're, you are in business. How does that, what's that transition and what sets you apart from other people doing something similar to you? I think, we're, we're not a business that sells widgets. We don't sell services such as, you know, um, you know maintenance services or, or just transactional stuff that people can access a Supply Nation database to say, I want stationery or I want this or that. Because we're an Indigenous creative agency, people come to us because we have a specific um, set of services that are required for our clients. Yeah. So. Um, so as part of that, you know, we are a cultural creative business. 
as the executive director and owner of Galimba, that for me is front and centre. Yeah. I take that to work every day. Yeah. I take that to every meeting with our clients because that's why our clients come to us, because it's culture and creativity. Yeah. So how, what, it practically, what does, that, what does that translate into? What are some of the types of services that you'll provide to your clients? Well, that translates to a wide range of creative services, um, anything from branding to straight graphic design, bespoke artwork, commissioned artwork, um, to, um, to photography. We do filming, we do animation, a whole range of different creative services. Um, as well as end-to-end -end campaigns, yeah. so that can be, you know, um, national health campaigns to, you know, small community focus, um, you know, um, projects that are delivered, you know, for and with community. Yeah. yeah. And how can people get in contact with Galimba? Like, what's the best way if, if someone was interested to come work with you? Um, simply go to our website. The cliche of jump on the socials, Facebook, <laughs> like, you know, thumbs up, hashtag, all the rest of it. Uh, but no, look, um, we've got a presence online, like, you know, yeah. many businesses uh, do. So get in contact with us, www.galimba.com.au. And, um, and we've got a contact form there, or just Google. You're probably one of the most long-standing mm -hmm. Supply Nation certified Indigenous businesses mm -hmm. and I commend you for that because you've been there throughout the whole journey of mm -hmm. the Indigenous sector, business sector growing across Australia. What do you think is your legacy? What do you want to be remembered for? Because already these last, what, 12 years or so mm -hmm. have been quite phenomenal and you've, you've gone through, from strength to mm -hmm. strength. But what's, what's David Williams and Galimba's legacy? Oh, look, I, I think the legacy moving forward is about looking to our past and where we come from um, and really honouring those who've done it hard before us um, to pave the way for us doing what we are doing now. And there's other businesses out there who've done similar things to what we've done but started that journey in the 90s yeah. and it was a very different environment back then. Then you're looking at, you know, even before that, you know, um, I mentioned before the, um, you know, Aboriginal media, the, the, how that's developed over the years, even before that, the land rights shop. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of that work has existed and allowed that next generation of, you know, young people and younger people um, to make the most of the opportunities that we have today. I think um, it's, um, it's a responsibility of us to carry that forward. Galimba was certified in the first round of um, Supply Nation, or back then, AMC, uh, in December 2009, yeah. 2008. So we were one of the six foundation um, yeah. suppliers. And it's, it's amazing to think over that, over that period of time, yeah. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I know it's in the hundreds, right? So, like, to, to just see that trajectory of the sector growing. Yeah. And the exciting thing about that is, you know, particularly for us and our competitors, there's a lot more of them, but, um, you know, the late Gavin Jones would always say that, um, you know, the bigger the pie, the more for, for all of us. And I, I really, you know, kind of take that on board because for any business and any indigenous business out there yeah. who's worried about competitors out there like you need to be thinking about that because I guess from a cultural point of view you know we need to help you know bring others up yeah. and um, with us along that journey because success breeds success and it also keeps us in check as well to make sure that yeah. we're doing the right thing. Definitely mm. that sounds like it all that all connects in very much with the vision, but also what Galimba stands for mm. as a name. Do you want to mm. just tell us a little bit about yeah, the certainly. name Galimba? Yeah, certainly. So Galimba, in my language, my grandmother's language, simply means today. And the idea behind that is we have the stories of our old people from yesterday yeah. carried over to today in cultural way. Yeah. We say Galimba because it's what we do today that has an impact on tomorrow. So get to buy our language for dawn, dawn of the new yeah. day. So. Fantastic. Mm. And is there any kind of final message you want to leave for those that are watching today? Oh, look, I think um, for anybody seeing this, you know, it's, it's, it's a really exciting time. It feels like we're always saying this, but it's always an exciting time for the Indigenous <laughs> business sector um, because there's so many businesses, deadly black businesses, just doing amazing things. Mm. And the fact is here we are, um, you know, 
2022 after being COVID yeah. locked down for two years, we're all getting back together. It's, it's almost like the band is back together and to connect with, you know, what everyone's been doing and what they're doing in the future. Yeah. And all I can say to other people out there, whether you be a, you know, work in procurement or your buyer or whatnot, or even an observer, um, get involved, you know, reach out to us because, you know, more than happy, just have that yarn and, um, and it's, it's just exciting. And I can't wait to, um, yeah, <laughs> to get involved <laughs> more so at Connect this year and, yeah. and um, the year ahead. Well, thanks so much for your time, David. And uh, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned to the next edition.